Welcome back to Parenting to Impress, your go-to podcast to learn practical ways to love God and love others, and impress this on the hearts of your children. I am your host, Heidi Franz, and I am joined by my dear friend, Melanie Simpson, two moms who have made a lot of mistakes, but have found grace and truth along the way. So in the last episode, we discussed how to pray the scriptures and why it is important. If you haven't listened to that one, I encourage you to go back. We'll include the link in the show notes so you can. But we discussed how it can grow your faith, understand who God is, and focus your prayer time. But now, Melanie, how do we teach our children to pray? Yeah, it's one of our most important roles as moms is to lead and to teach our children how to talk to God through prayer. But I think a lot of us come to the table thinking, little kids don't understand prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I believe in some ways, children actually understand prayer better than I do. While the Bible doesn't specifically tell us to have childlike faith, there are multiple passages that talk about becoming like children in our faith. You know, Mark 10 says, Jesus called the children to him and he used children as an example of this innocent faith. Yes. And he, and then Jesus has very harsh words for the Pharisees and the Sadducees who made prayer all about showing off their knowledge. Mm. There was distinction made between heart knowledge and head knowledge. And Jesus was not a fan of those showy prayers. Exactly correct. So we actually need to be more like children when we come to God in prayer. And one of the ABC Jesus Loves Me users shared the idea of blowing bubbles. Oh, You ever heard of that? This was a new one to me. The idea of blowing bubbles is like sending our prayers to God. Mm -hmm. And so she took her children outside. She had a bottle of bubbles and she said, you know, this is what it's like when we pray. Our prayers go to God and children understand this concept. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. You know, it's interesting when we have really young children, we'll say the preschool age and younger It's not so much about them understanding prayer. I mean, that's just a a big concept, Mm. but it's more about exposing them to prayer. So letting them see us prayer, making it just this natural, organic part of our day. It happens at meals. It happens at bedtimes. It happens in the car. It's just second nature to them. Right. So when do we start teaching our children to pray? Is there a certain age? And this is a question that I get asked a lot on Facebook. And I answer it the same way. Mm -hmm. It's never too early to begin. I agree. And I'm going to say there is nothing more precious than a 14-month-old folding his hands, bowing his head, listening to an adult pray. I know. Or remember when your toddlers repeated after your prayer, thank you for the food. And some would say that they're too young to understand, but I feel it's never too early to begin to lay a foundation of communication with God, making it a natural part of their daily lives. And hopefully it's a natural part of yours. Agree. It is a beautiful way of showing our children that the God that we pray to, the God that we talk about, he's a personal God. He wants that interaction, that intimate Mm -hmm. connection. And so I think it's just like anything else. When we teach our kids, we model it. We don't just hand our kid a toothbrush and say, go brush your teeth. We stand there with them. We do it for them for a Mm -hmm. long time. And then eventually we hand over the reins. That's where I think the praying at mealtimes, at bedtimes, that feels boring to us, right? Because it's the same prayer over and over again. But we know that's how toddlers learn. That's how preschoolers learn is that repetition. So teaching a child to learn how to pray can happen even before they're verbal. Right. You don't have to wait until they have a huge vocabulary. And how we began in our family is what I call hand over hand. I would take my children's hands and fold them together gently with mine and then hold them together until the prayer was over. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I miss those chubby little fingers Mm -hmm. folded up. Um, We would do kneeling at bedtime, like right by the bedside. I would kneel. And then when they were really little, I would just tuck them into my lap. And then of course, as they get older, they would kneel beside me. Again, just another way to model a posture of prayer. And to prepare children to pray, what I do when I'm leading preschool worship at church, I sing a little song with them. And I'm just going to sing it for you. And we will include these words in the show notes so you can do them with your family as well. But the song's so simple. It goes like this. 
One little, two little, three little fingers, four little, five little, six little fingers, seven little, eight little, nine little fingers, ten fingers folded in prayer. And by the time we finish that song, the children are ready for prayer. You know, another thing that we did is teach our children, as soon as they had the vocabulary of the word amen, to close out our prayers. And so daddy would be praying and whoever was in charge of amen that day would close it out. And I remember so well, about 18 months, um, little man especially, would raise his hands and say, amen. (laughs) They were able to have a part in prayer. Yes. That introduction into owning prayer was huge um, and precious. And we would often do the fill in the blank. So Mm -hmm. as we were modeling prayer, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for this meal. Thank you for a roof of our heads. Thank you for this family. And then we could turn to a toddler and say, thank you for, and they might say the same thing you said, just right back to you, parroting. That's okay. But eventually, step by step, they would begin to fill in the blank with something they were thankful for. Again, hilarious often, Uh you know, things that children are thankful for. You know, that's the repetition, that thank you for, just Mm -hmm. making it a part of your daily routine, your daily rhythms. And then the short prayers, because kids don't, they can't hold that many words. Exactly. And, you know, I kept track of some of my favorite prayers that my kids said. And in preparing for this podcast, Melanie, I brought out one of the prayers that little man had before his fourth birthday. Oh boy. Can I share that yes, with please. you? Yes, please. Okay. So this was his prayer. Thank you for my friend, Noah. I like him. And for my friend, mommy, she is nice. And for dress up day, I want to be a superhero. And I want to save you, God and the Lord and Jesus but I won't save Satan and Goliath because they are bad. I don't want to obey them. I want to obey you, Jesus, the Lord and God. Amen. And for the food. (laughs) Don't forget the food. (laughs) Absolutely. But I love the innocence Mm -hmm. of that prayer. Now, you will notice that it's not quite theologically sound. (laughs) Right. Right. But... He is learning the process and oh, how I should learn from my Mm three-year-old that I can just talk to God. You know, in Luke 11, Jesus modeled prayer for his disciples and we too must take the time to model prayer for our children and we can further encourage them in our honesty Mm -hmm. to say, I'm struggling with this. God, I need your help. This is tough. Yeah. Yes, there's a place and a time for those rote prayers, but we can come before the Lord in all circumstances and just talk to him. That's that's huge. Absolutely. And that kind of goes hand in glove with the pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5:17. That's exactly what it tells us is to pray without mm-hmm. ceasing. And so when we don't delegate prayer to just mealtime, just bedtime, mm-hmm. just Sunday mornings, when we help our children see that we can go to God any time of day mm-hmm. in small and large matters, passing an accident on the side of the road, Lord be with them. Right. When I get a phone call and I am so frustrated with somebody, God help me control my anger. So just making it such an organic part of my life that they see it too. And making it our go-to reaction. Yeah. You stated about when you receive a phone call or a text that frustrates Mm -hmm. you to immediately go to God with that instead of wanting to tell somebody about it. Instead of wanting to post on Facebook how upset you are about it, but to immediately go to God. I love Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And notice how Paul is instructing us to not even step into the circle of anxiety. Immediately, we are to go to God in prayer. And our kids are watching. Yeah. Now that my kids are older, too, knowing that now, whether they're doing it or not, it's not up to me, but knowing that when they have the equipping to do that in their classroom or on the bus to a game for, you know, when there are sports, it's just, it's, it's so ingrained in them. It's part of who they are. And they can immediately take those concerns to God. They don't need us yeah. to be there to lead them through the right. process. Right. 
And so as much as we are modeling it, we're making it part of just an ongoing conversation throughout the day, we also want to be careful that we are not saying don't have a set aside time with right. God. So, you know, for me, it's a morning prayer time. I'm reading scripture. I'm praying over my day, praying over my kids. I know for some people that happens at bedtime, but whatever that looks like, just helping them understand that we can have a designated time in our day that we make this conversation with God a priority. Mm-hmm. It's not, oh, I forgot to pray today. Right. It's I get to pray and here is when I know I've got this time set aside for that. So Melanie, I know that a popular baby and toddler gift is books of prayer. Should children simply memorize and pray these pre-written prayers? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think there's value in that. Just like we talked about, we know preschoolers learn through repetition. Um, I don't know about you, but my kids, when they were that age, endlessly requested the same book. Mm -hmm. And so there is value in them hearing the same words over and over again. Again, I would caution, is it quality? Is it true? Is it scripture-based? You know, we have the Bible as our benchmark for that, so use it. But I think as long as it's accurate, it's a great way to help toddlers, preschoolers learn prayer. Right. And as we have talked from the beginning of this podcast, though, we also want to teach children how to have honest talks with God. And so while there is a place for these rope prayers, we also want to model and teach children that God wants to hear their thoughts. Mm -hmm. God is a big God and nothing that they say is going to surprise him or shock him. Mm -hmm. And so we want to teach children how to talk with honesty about their emotions, their feelings, their dreams, Mm -hmm. their aspirations. So We would say, and we would encourage you, yes, there is a place for those books, but also remember to teach those honest conversations. Okay. So here's the fun one. Okay. What do we do with the child that flat out refuses to pray? Yeah. And I would say if I was sitting across from a mama at a coffee shop and they said, my child refuses to pray. I would say it's normal. Mm -hmm. It is very common for kids to go through those stages where they just don't want to pray out loud. Mm -hmm. And so remove the battle. When we make it a battle, it reminds me of potty training. (laughs) You know, when we make a battle of potty training is when all the accidents happen. When we remove the battle is when we allow the child to have the freedom to do what they're supposed to do. Right, right. So I would say, first of all, remove the battle and continue to model what prayer looks like. And then also to model what prayer is in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let them see that. Yeah. Which brings me to another point. If it's not genuine, kids are excellent um, hypocrite mm-hmm. sniffer outers. <laughs> and so um, if we are not coming humbly before the Lord and genuinely praying out of the desire to have that interaction with God, they're going to know. Absolutely. So that's kind of like the first red flag. But the second thing is that prayer time is not the time for the discipline. Maybe after a prayer time, come alongside and say, mm-hmm. Hey, you know, I noticed that you really are not wanting to participate in prayer at mealtime. Can we talk about that? What's going on? Help me understand why this is a no for you. Now, this is obviously for an older child that can express mm-hmm. why. For a toddler, a preschooler, just like you said, let it go. It'll come with time. Mm-hmm. As they get older and they still don't want to do it, then have the conversation. But when they're little, that's not a battle you want to get into because then it becomes a, I have to perform for God thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Now I will say that there were times where I would have a child who would become very silly during their prayer time. And that was when my husband or myself would explain to them that when we talk to God, it's not about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It is not to draw laughs. It is not to draw attention. We are talking to God and we need to be respectful about that. I agree. I feel like we need to remember it's an awesome God that we serve and that word awe There's a reverence that we can come before God, even Mm -hmm. as a child. Will it be perfect? Of course not. But 
we model that reverence. Exactly. You and I have talked about how to teach babies and and toddlers and preschoolers, but what happens if I'm a mom who has teenagers and I have never taught them this? I've never modeled this. Maybe I'm a new Christian. Is it too late? Oh, no, absolutely not. But I think the same steps still apply, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can start with a rote prayer if that makes you feel more comfortable and just begin as a family to do that or just invite your kid to sit next to you as you are praying mm-hmm. to God. Let them hear that conversation that you're having with the Lord. I don't know. What would you do? You know, that, that that's a really good question. And because that has not been my story, it's not something that I have experienced. But I can say there is nothing more powerful than listening to a new Christian prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Because in some ways, it's very much like a child praying in that it's so full of faith and so full of awe. They are not hindered by all of the fear and anxiety. And the Christianese that we seem to pick up along the way. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You're so right. And so I envy new Christians mm-hmm. being able to pray because they just speak what they yeah. want to say to God. And that is powerful. Mm -hmm. There is no rule Mm -hmm. about what makes them right and what makes them wrong. And I think this is a great place for questions and comments to be posted. We have a Parenting to Impress Facebook group. It is private, so only the members of that group can see these questions or comments. We'd love to hear from you. What are the things that are working for you as you begin your prayer journey with the Lord? Or what questions do you have? If you're a new believer... We'd love to help walk along this path with you. So please share there. And it's not that we have all the answers. Right. We would like to join you in this journey because we've made a lot of mistakes on the way. Yes, ma'am. And we are still learning and we would love to learn alongside you. And encourage you. I mean, it is our privilege, I think, as sisters in Christ to get to pray with you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a joy for me. Absolutely. I can't help but apply prayer to our parenting theme verse from Deuteronomy 6-7. Impress on your children. Impress prayer on your children. Pray with your children when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. I can't promise that if you do every one of these steps that your child will have a deep prayer life. Right. But as I listen to our four children pray, I am blown away by their honest and unfiltered conversation that they have with God. You know, it makes me think maybe instead of me teaching my children, my children are actually teaching me how to pray. Thank you for listening to the Parenting to Impress podcast. We invite you to visit abcjesuslovesme.com and parentingtoimpress.com. Check out the show notes and join the Parenting to Impress private Facebook group for more information about topics shared in this episode. Please subscribe, review, and share this episode with your friends.